talking about family division and unity. Because if we don't know how to be united as husbands and wives and parents and children, how will we ever accomplish unity in any other category? And who better for us as brothers and sisters to talk to about family than two brothers who made the movies Fireproof, Courageous, and War Room about marriage, about parenting, and about prayer as a powerful weapon in a family's success story. So will you please join me as we talk now with Alex and Stephen Kendrick. Welcome, sir. Oh, th thank you, guys. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm so excited that we're finally here together. And we're talking about the need for, for unity and how it needs to begin at home. And, yeah. you know, you, you made this little movie called Fireproof that a lot of us have seen. <coughs> have you seen it? I have. <laughs> and uh, defining moments in movies like that have made all the difference for us as, as, uh, as husbands and wives, as parents. And I wonder how you view the issue of family disunity. I mean, your pastors, your ministers, your, your husbands, your fathers, and you've got a passion for this. Family should be the most united uh, organization on earth. Why do you think families struggle so much? We're broken. You know, Jesus said that we're all sinners and we're in a sinful world. <coughs> and sinners choose themselves over other people. They choose, they choose dishonesty over truth. You know, our father was in a divided home, but he surrendered his life to Christ. And the gospel radically changed him from the inside out. And uh, we grew up in a home learning about love uh, from Christ because Jesus is the ultimate unifier. Mm. And uh, not only is God in perfect unity within the <coughs> Trinity, but he invites us to the table to join his family. And Ephesians 4 says, make every effort to keep this unity that the Holy Spirit brings into our lives. But we're in a broken world that's, mm. that's very divided. We have a real enemy, the devil, who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to destroy our marriages. He wants to destroy our fellowship with God and with one another. And, uh, and then our own hearts need to be redeemed through the gospel. And when Jesus invades a life, uh, he transforms us. But we have to walk in that on a daily basis. When I'm not walking with the Lord and I'm not right with the Lord and I'm choosing myself over him, I am selfish and prideful and irritable and unforgiving and you greedy. Too? And, yeah, absolutely. But when, <laughs> but when I'm right with the Lord and I'm walking with him and I humble myself before him, that his Holy Spirit begins to take over and he gives me a love for my imperfect brothers. <laughs> and uh, and for, for other people, he causes me to want to apologize. Instead of being bitter, he causes me to want to forgive the people who are around me. And uh, scripture says that love is the perfect bond of unity. And that's what Jesus brings when he takes over our hearts. So I hear you saying that we, we really do need to be intentional, intentional about this because there is a, an enemy. And you're, you're talking about a two-headed enemy. You're talking about the enemy of my own heart, which tends to be selfish if left unchanged by God. And then we have a real enemy, the devil, who would love to take us out at the family level. Absolutely. You know, Satan is an accuser, and he wants to come into you and accuse your spouse in your mind and them in your mind. He's constantly trying. The devil has the spiritual gift of division and, and discouragement. You know, he's after us, and we, get, we need to realize that he's real, and we need to resist him. So in light of that, what is the solution? I mean, I hear what you're saying. I want family unity. How do we get there? Is there a way to really glue us together supernaturally? Yes, yeah, so, so as a dad... When I think of my family, my children, the first thing that I have to remember is, uh, first it starts with me, a changed heart. That I'm a new creation in Christ, all things are passed away and everything's new. Second Corinthians 5.17 says, because I'm in Christ. Once that's settled, I need to pass that on to my kids. I need to teach my kids. Well, he here's something crucial to remember. My kids, as they grow, will tend to take the beliefs of those they believe love them the most. Mm 
That's true. Right? So as a parent, I have to nurture and, and have their heart. Because if I have their heart, they'll listen to me. If I don't have their heart, they're going to listen to their friends or whoever they think love them. Right? And so once I do that, I have to nurture them. I give them attention, affirmation, affection. And I nurture them. And work is not more important. My hobbies are not more important. They're my homework assignment from the Lord. Now, once that is set, as a family, we want to be on mission for the Lord. When does unity happen? You know, if you and I were at a ball game standing in line to get tickets and I didn't know who you were, there's no unity yet. But what if we buy our tickets, you stand next I mean you you yeah, you stand next to me in the stands, we're rooting for the same team, you know, and we, we got the same goal here. <coughs> Cheer them on against the same opponent. You know, now there's unity. We're giving each other high fives. I don't even know you. And we, we got unity building. What happens in the military? These guys from different states come together in the barracks for the first time. There's no unity yet until they go on mission together. And it engenders unity. They have the same goal, standing against the same enemy. You know, and so as Christians, as the church, what are we called to do? To be salt and light, to honor the Lord, stand against the, the same enemy, uh, uh, stand for the same truth. And when we're on mission together, it engenders unity. It starts in the family. And so as a father, I honor the Lord myself. I'm right with him. I love my kids so that they'll listen to me, right? Mm. And, then I, and then I give that. And then we go on mission together to honor the Lord and what he calls us to do. It engenders unity. Wow. That, and that's such a word, particularly to fathers. I know it's so easy for me to get so preoccupied with all that I want to accomplish mm -hmm. that um, I forget that relationship is most important. I hear you saying that right now. Yeah. You know, do you remember the movie The Incredibles? Do you remember The Incredibles? It was a Pixar movie. Of course. If you watch the movie, all of them have a gift. You know, Mr. Incredible's strong, his wife's elastic, um, Dash is super fast, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, now, and there's, and there's disunity in the home until they realize we have the common enemy. There's an enemy out there, and we have to stand against him. And as they use the gifts that were given to them, and they fight the same enemy, what happens to the family? They get unified. By the end of the film, man, they're protecting one another, standing together. Well, does the church have gifts? Does God give us gifts? Right? And are we on mission together? We're on mission together. Unity happens when we're right with God ourselves. And we're on mission from the family unit, which is the foundation of the culture that we live in, to the body of Christ. When we're on mission together, amazing things happen. So...